Yes. So what does it take to become a top rated freelancer uh, in the world? One of the top rated in the world is a lot of work. And this is absolutely real because anytime you work with a client, they come, they, I saw your reviews, they give you five stars, they give you nice, uh, very uh, good, good reviews. And it's something like, it's just real. If you don't do a good job, they're not going to do that. That means you're doing things right. So how do you do that? Yeah. Yeah, so um, I think that um, if you want to have, um, you know, a good profile on Upwork, if you want to be long lasting on, um, not only on Upwork, on any um, platform like Fiverr, many others, you have to build this portfolio of uh, clients. So um, you have to have, in order for you to attract clients, first of all, you need to have a very detailed profile where you talk about all the things that you know how to do all your skills. So it's very important for people to read about your skills and to um, um, express your personality and your intention to help them. And uh, you're a your abilities and maybe mention also uh, a few of your collaborations uh, if you will check your my profile you will see i always mention uh, the people that i work with before mm -hmm. the countries and uh, also the skills that i can bring to the table so people know from the start what they can expect from me mm -hmm. uh, i always try to have a very respectful honest and open relationship with my customers and i believe that uh, ethics is very, very important. I was very lucky to work in um, a corporate. So I came uh, in this freelancing world with um, a certain way of uh, dealing with people, which was very professional, mm -hmm. very ethical. Some people starting freelancing without having any previous experience. They just jump into it and, you know, play it by the ear. I came with this mindset of being respectful in uh, verb communication and writing, very important, and uh, respecting my deadlines, um, being transparent with my results and creating very realistic expectations. I, I have this feeling and this understanding that many market marketers, digital marketing agencies, um, freelancers create very unrealistic expectations for their clients. Yeah. They will say, oh, I will generate the sales for you. Uh, we will do this and that just to get the paycheck. Right. And, you know, when things are not delivered, they will just, you know, move their shoulders and they will say just bad luck. Right. The market is down, whatever. Yeah. But I always uh, try to... Um, to be very realistic, have this open discussion where I would say, you know, what's your expectation and tell them what I believe I can do for them. When it comes to advertising and to sales, um, you can never, ever guarantee 100% the results because it's not only up to you. Right. There are so many factors. And I always try to make people understand that marketing, marketing, not sales, marketing brings the client to the door Yes. It's your responsibility as the person that, you know, closes the deal mm -hmm. to make sure that person enters the door and right. stays in for years. So right. you have to sell and um, retain right. the customer. Uh, advertising itself doesn't do that. Right. So there are the steps. Um, I understood this uh, when I was working in corporate, the, the very clear the limitation between marketing and sales that many people that are in business don't know and don't understand. Well, wow, that's such a good advice. Like, you know, marketing just bring the customer to the door is up to you to make, you know, get him inside. Yes, inside because and, I had, you know, you know I had experience with people where we had, I don't know, one 100 people lined up for sales i had this experience with someone in singapore she was asking me to make sure she was uh, selling this um um educational package mm -hmm. uh, for younger children age three four something like that um in uh, so it was an educational program from singapore being sold in uh, malaysia and uh, indonesia so i would get her you know three, four 
five appointments with schools per week. So I was opening the door. Yeah. She was not able to, to, to create a sale when she would go for the discussion. She was not good at, you know, closing the deal. Right. She was not good at um, retaining that customer because of her personal attitude with the customer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the school, right. she was not able to sell herself. I was doing my part, but she was not doing hers. And I had to be honest. We have a problem here. I'm working my side. I'm doing well, but you're not doing well on your side. What do we need to do? So you see, you have to have that open um, discussion. Of course, we have the cases where everything is automated and like the uh, click funnels, the, the sales funnels where things should be smooth. Mm-hmm. But again, there are always so many tweaks to the uh, story and the situation. Wow. That's such a good advice. Like you need to have a great product and then you need to be able to sell your product yourself. So once you have a marketing specialist like you who can bring you the customer so you can close the deal. Or yeah, because there work. are people uh, that are, um, you know, I deal with so many people that there, there are people who are consultants, they are therapists, they are many different types of people I uh, dealt with. Yeah. I was bringing the people, but when they have the meeting, you know, to make the payment, to have that, because we would advertise that one-to-one right. and that uh, free one-to-one, that free one-to-one was to close the deal. Right. Have that discussion where you close the deal and you sell the package, I don't know, 10 consultation therapies, whatever. They were not able to do it or they would make a very uh, small percentage of what they were hoping for. So I wasn't the one, you know, to point to. That's why I said sales and marketing go hand to hand, hand in hand, but they are not the same. So for someone who is out there, a new freelancer on Fiverr or someone freelance on LinkedIn, it's very hard to get your first contract. It's very hard to first refer your first job because most people are going to look out to Christina. They're like, hey, I'm looking for a marketing specialist. I'm going to go talk to someone who has 10 plus years of experience. So yeah. it's very hard for new people right now to get their first job. So what can they do? Well, I think that if you want to step into a competitive market, you need to come with at least two, three skills. You cannot come with only one. Mm -hmm. Or if you come with that only one skill, like let's say you are a writer, you are a creative writer and you want to uh, write content for blogs, you have to uh, showcase, even if you're not selling, even if you had zero collaboration before you still need to have like some sorts of portfolio and you know come with that portfolio people just want to see results they want to know that the job is going to get done Uh, most of the times when you work with a freelancer you don't want to spend too much time giving instructions so you have to be a good communicator know from the beginning what you have to do what are the deadlines and uh, how to not create trouble for other people and uh, be very responsible because I saw I had experience working with other freelancers you know I needed someone to uh, I was just uh, managing a project and I had to uh, you know assign tasks for a designer for a web developer and guess what after two three days couldn't get in contact with them they would drop the project they wouldn't do only half or or they get moody oh I don't want to do this Uh, you know and I when I start even if I lose money okay because maybe it takes longer than I expected maybe there were some troubles I will finish it because that's how you become a top rated freelancer you finish the job you don't drop the job Mm -hmm. so if you are serious about becoming a freelancer you should know that in your first few projects you might maybe lose some money, maybe it's going to take you a bit longer than you expected because you're learning how long it takes you to write something or how many changes the client will want. So it's a process and you should just see it as a process of learning and maybe put um, earnings second. Mm -hmm. Earnings you can consider only after a while. I also started with a very low um, rate per hour because I was learning and I understood If I wanted to make extra money, I would have to take more work, not charge more. I started to charge more and select my projects only when I got to to the level where I know it's going to take this time. The client is going to ask for, um, you know, changes. 
-hmm. two, three times. Mm -hmm. It's okay. And I can finish the project. I am capable to finish something. So you have to be ready to fin to start and finish something, no matter what. <laughs> right. <laughs>